Well, good morning. Welcome to another quick Yukon Bob Sea-Doo video. This has been a really crappy spring in Toronto. I have only been out once on the Sea-Doo. It's the 7th of June, and this will be the second time and perhaps uh, for first really warm day heading out on the Sea-Doo. It's supposed to be about uh, Celsius, 24, 25 degrees today. So I'm just going for a short run heading up to Lake Simcoe, north of me, by about 45 minutes. Drop the, the boat in there, the Sea-Doo in there, and uh, gonna take a little tour around Lake Simcoe. So finally, a nice warm day in Toronto. Going to head out in a, about half an hour from now. I've got everything kind of loaded up, and uh, once we get up to Lake Simcoe, I'm going to show you some of the uh, the navigation systems I've put in place on the Sea-Doo, and uh, we'll get back to you once we're out on the water and drop the boat in the Sea-Doo in at Lake Simcoe. Well, just under an hour to get up to uh, Lake Simcoe. I'm on the water now. There's a there's an old guy who runs the the boat launch here. He just sits in his pickup truck and he waits for people to show up. Ten bucks to uh, to launch here. Uh, there used to be a place just across the road over there that you could launch for free. But that uh, used to be a Boston Pizza, it's now changed hands. And I see that they're charging $20 over there. So this looks like the best bet on this side of the little uh, the little river here to get out onto Lake Simcoe. So you park your truck, you can that's included, the, the parking with the, the launch. And then he collects the 10 bucks and uh, wants you in and out of here real quick. And then you're on your way. So let's head out, head out onto Lake Simcoe and have a look at what kind of day we got. So from the launch point, there's just this little river that takes you out through uh, a marina and then out onto uh, Lake Simcoe. You go through one of the bigger boat dealerships here uh, on uh, Lake Simcoe Pride Marine on the way out. Little bridge here, this is the road. Duck your head. Oh! That'll limit the size of boat you can bring under. Well, looking at that flag, it looks like we got just a little bit of wind today. Probably 10, 12 kilometers an hour. All right, I'm gonna just explain a couple of little things as to what I use for navigation on uh, the Sea-Doo. Uh, when I bought the Sea-Doo, I thought, okay, I'm gonna need some way to navigate with this thing when I'm out on some of the bigger bodies of water. How to get out, how to get back, where I am, depth, all that sort of stuff. Not so much depth because that's not really that big an issue on the sea -Doo. You can pretty much look on the water and tell what the depth is. But what I did is I thought I'll, I'll get a, a Garmin GPS. And so I started looking around and I found the, uh, found the Garmin Echo. And that's the Garmin Echo there. I think it's about a seven inch screen on there. I've used Garmin before and this thing has got uh, all the maps for, I think basically inland waters of all of North America, Canada, built right into it. Canada anyway. I think that's specifically what I was interested in and they had a, a section just for the Canada maps and that's what I've got. So that's just mounted on there with a bracket right down below. It's just screwed on right through this plate. This plate kind of comes off and what you can do then is put a plate in behind it and then screw it down onto there. Root your cable down through underneath into the, the body of the, uh, the Sea-Doo and right directly hardwire it to uh, the battery. So that Garmin Echo is what I thought is what I was going to be needing to, to do my navigation. Then somebody told me about this app called Navionics. And Navionics is something that you can download and put it onto your, uh, onto your iPhone. And that's what I've done here. And I find that what I am doing now is using the Navionics app way more than I use the Garmin. Because with the Navionics map you can zoom in, zoom out. You can do that with the... Uh, with the Garmin as well, but this allows you to kind of plot a route. If you decide where you want to go and you press the spot that you want to go to, it'll actually give you a line on the map and you can just kind of follow that map. Also gives you a lot more information about, uh, you know, where the closest marina is, where uh, gas is, where services are, that sort of thing. So for the most part, that's just wired into my USB plug-in, which is in here. And I just mounted that using a, uh, a Garmin ball mount just silicone that on there, drilled a couple of little holes, and then put a little short uh, ball mount on there so you can tilt it up and down. And then it's just got one of those uh, sort of, uh, I forget what they call these things, spider mounts or something like that. 
you can set your, your cell phone in there. It's easy to pull in and out, tilt it up and down depending what the sun's doing. And this works really well. So I use the Navionics along with the Garmin. That gives me a track. You probably can't quite see it on there, but it lays out, out a track. So wherever you've come from and wherever you've gone to, it lays a track there and you can easily follow that back if you're at all confused as to where you are. So those are the two things that I use on the Sea-Doo for navigation. They seem to be good so far. Uh, I don't carry a VHF radio with me. I'm just using my cell phone. I keep an eye on whether I've got signal and service and pretty much everywhere I've gone so far, there's been uh, some bars. So I'm able to uh, use the cell phone as a telephone to contact people if I need to for help. So in that regard, I've just not felt there's been a need uh, thus far for a VHF radio on board. Um, I do a lot of traveling by myself, so that is a bit of a concern, but as long as I can make a phone call with the phone, I should be okay, I think. So that's it. I use this, the Navionics app on a cell phone on my iPhone, and then I use the Garmin Echo. I think that was under $400, something like that. So with those two devices, I'm pretty much, uh, pretty much confident that I can go anywhere, know where I am, and uh, know how to get back out uh, of wherever I'm at and back home. Both are powered uh, directly by the sea -Doo. And this, I just uh, leave it on there, but if I need to put the cover on, the sea -Doo, with that little mount that's there, I pop that top piece off, it just snaps out, and then the cover will still go on there. So the cover can still work over top of that mount. So that's it for navigation on the sea -Doo. Nice little beach. There aren't too many places along Lake Simcoe where there is not a private property in somebody's cabin. Here's one area where you actually have a little bit of private beach area. Gravel bars it is, but at least there's not cabin to cabin to cabin or cottage to cottage all the way along. So not a bad day today. It's gonna have to get a little bit warmer though. Uh, it's still kind of cool when you're moving along, but when you stop, it's really quite nice. Hope that tree doesn't fall down. I've seen some big fish in the water. There's a bunch of little minnows, you know, in schools zipping around all over the place. And then occasionally you'll catch three or four big ones together, just kind of swimming along. I guess they're eating the little minnows. Oh, I guess I should get the clip undone. There. Gonna get out for probably four or five hours today. Nothing major. Just kind of getting to know the systems a little bit again. It's been a year since I've been on it. I've only been on it once before today and that was only for a few hours. So yeah, you just kind of getting used to everything again. Water's a little warmer in the bay. I don't think it's swimming water yet, but it's getting there. I don't know if you can see them, but there's a bunch of minnows in the water right there. Let's shove this off a little bit. Just a bit. Ugh. Start it up. Reverse. Forward. So I'm trying something a little bit different on uh, this sea -Doo outing. I'm doing a little fishing. It's the first time I've fished off the sea -Doo. I've been out a number of times and seen kind of, you know, quite a few fish in the water swimming by uh, different types of fish. There's been pike, I think there's some pickerel. So I decided that I would get a little fishing rod. This is one of those things that just is a telescoping rod. It folds right into itself and it'll fit right inside of there. So there's no problem in carrying it. I brought a little tackle box with a few hooks and leaders and things like that. So I'm just trying it out. And um, I can see already I need a shorter leader. That leader is too long. It's going to be hard to show you this with... Uh, okay, 
I gotta. It's hard to show you this and fish at the same time, but take this over like this, and out she goes. Oh, crank the handle. Yeah, it's hard to show you this because the camera keeps jiggling as I'm cranking the handle. But yeah, first time fishing on the Sea Dew. It's another little thing to do on one of those days where you're not traveling very far, you just want to hang out. You can just take the fishing rod along, do some casting, maybe catch a fish. I don't have a net, no net or anything like that, so I don't know what I would do if I caught a fish. I've got a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers to remove the hooks and things like that, but basically I think I just do catch and release. I don't really want to keep the fish. But I'm going to be doing a little more fishing over the next while off the sea dew. Here's what it looks like when it's all broken down. It's just a telescoping uh, uh, rod that all folds into itself and then uh, it's not all that long. So from about there to there, easily fits into the trunk of the sea dew, the hatch, no problem. So I can just chuck it in there and pull it out when I want. I did put some suntan lotion on a little while ago. That spray stuff sprayed it around the back of my neck and hands and legs. You get a lot of sun out here and you don't, you don't realize it because uh, the air is kind of cool still. So it doesn't feel all that bad, but it's quite a bit of sun when it's bouncing off the water and out of the sky and onto you. So just a little bit on the neck and stuff so I don't get burnt. We got a little bit of uh, aerial visual with a Mavic Pro drone. Let's pack it up and uh, head back out on the water for a bit. Did I mention there's a great sound system on board? Hey, it's a whole gaggle of geese. All right, well, we've done some exploring around Lake Simcoe. Been out for about uh, four hours today. Time to head her back home. I got some things I got to do tonight at home, so I better get back there because it is the wife's birthday today. She said you can go for the day, but you got to be back for dinner tonight, so that's a deal. Gonna turn around and head back home now. Thanks for coming along on this quick little Yukon Bob video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll have some more better sea-do trips uh, later on in the season. See you later.